In this video, we're going to look at interest. And in particular, we're going to look at two different models for interest. Interest is what you earn when you save money. So if you put money in the bank, they give you some extra money each year as a reward for using them as your bank. Similarly, if you borrow money from the bank, they charge you interest, so you have to pay a little bit extra each year, and that's the fee for borrowing the money. And there's two types of interest that we're going to look at here. First of all, we're going to look on the left-hand side, and that is simple interest. And simple interest is calculated from the initial amount and the same amount is added each year. So as an example, how much would you have if you invested $450 for six years at 5% simple interest? So if it's simple interest, the first thing we do is find 5% of the 450. So 5% of the 450 we invested, well, that is the same as the 450 times by our multiplier will be 0 0.05. And when we do that, we find it's 22.5. So that means every year we're going to get $22.50. But there's six years. So at the beginning of the end of the first year, we get $22.50. End of the second year, we get $22.50. End of the third year, we get $22.50. And this is because it's simple interest. So for six years, we get $22.50 for six years. So six times by 22.5 gives us our total is 135. So after six years, the bank gives us $135 in total, which means our total amount that we have at the end of the six years is what we started with, plus what the bank gave us, 135 is $585, and that's $1. Now, we have to be careful with what the question asks. The question might ask how much do we end up with, in which case it's 585, or the question might ask how much interest do you earn, which would be 135, that's how much the bank gave us in total. Now compound interest is a bit different. Compound interest is calculated from the amount at the start of each year. So in the first year, you get 5% of your 450. In the second year, you get 5% of whatever you had after that 5% was added from year one. So let's have a look at the example. It's the same numbers, but this time it's compound interest instead of simple. So at the end of year one, we have to increase 450 by 5%. So it's 450 times by 1.05. That's how we increase by 5%. Our multiplier is 1.05. If you can't remember why, then have a look at the increase and decrease by a percentage video. And that gives us 472 dollars 50. That's exactly the same as we would have after one year in simple interest. So we've just added 5% on. The difference is now, in year two, we add 5% on to this value here. We now have that much in our bank. So we take 472 0.50 and we add 5% onto that, so we times by 1.05. This time we get 496.125. Now that would be rounded by the bank to 0.13, but we're going to keep the value exact for now until we get to our final answer, because that's what the number that we're interested in. We do the same in year three. Year three. We're going to use this value here, the one that we had at the end of year two. So that's 496.125. And then we're going to multiply that by 1.05. And that gives us 520.93125. We'd have to carry that method on to year four, year five, year six. And then finally, at the end of year six, we get the total amount. The problem is that's quite long-winded, particularly if we're talking about 20 years, or 50 years, or 100 years. 
We have to do 100 calculations. So can we make it shorter? Well, yes we can, because what we need to notice is that this here, 472.50, is this one here. And that is just equal to 450 times 1.05. So if we imagine swapping these, and instead of writing in here 472.5, we write 450 times by 1.05 times by 1.05. Well, actually, what happens there is now these two combine. 1.05 times 1.05. That's 1.05 squared. So instead of writing the two 1.05 separately, we can write it as times by 1.05 squared. And when we calculate that, we get the same answer. In the same way, 496.125, that's this number up here, which is now this whole bit here, 450 times 1.05 squared. So we can do the same thing. Instead of writing the 496.125, we can write that as 450 times by 1.05 squared. Again, 1.05 squared times 1.05. Well, that's 1.05 times 1.05 times 1.05, which is the same as 1.05 cubed. So instead of writing all that down, we can write 450 look, zero, times by 1.05 cubed, which is equal to 520 times 0.93125. Now, using the pattern, we can work out year 6. Year 6 is the original amount of 450, and that's times by 1.05. And notice that for each of the others, the power is the number of the year. The power is the number of the year. So the year is 6, so it's going to be the power of 6. And when we work that out, we get an answer of 603.04, rounded to two decimal places, because it's money. First of all, notice the compound interest, we got more than in the simple interest. 585 that we got with simple interest is less than the 603 that we get the compound interest. And that's because we're getting 5% of a bit more each year. We're getting interest on our interest each year in compound interest, which makes it better value for us. We can work this out each time. There is a formula we can do for compound interest. Um, it's a bit complicated, but the idea is the same. If we want to find it out, it is the initial amount that we invested, that's P, and then it's times by the multiplier. Now, the way to work out the multiplier, you know how to find the multiplier. 1.05 or 1.08 if you're increasing by 8% or 1.15 if you're increasing by 15%. If you can't remember how to work that out, have a look back at the increase and decrease by a percentage video. But one, the, the formal way of writing that is the 1 plus the percentage over 100. Okay. 5 divided by 100 is 0 0.05, plus the 1 gives us the 1.05. And then all of that thing in the bracket is to the power of n, and n is the number of years that you're investing for, so in this case, 6. So the difference between simple and compound interest, simple interest, you get the same amount every year, compound interest, you get the same percentage, but it's of the amount in your bank at the start of each year, rather than just 